hi, hello, and I, I've got to start here by saying thank you. Um, many of you have stuck with me throughout the past 15 or so months while I have intermittently uploaded uh, read aloud videos of Navigating Early by Claire Vanderpool. And I have to say thanks for your patience. Um, I am officially a teacher on summer vacation. I have much more time available to me now to dedicate to these read alouds. So you can look forward to hearing the remaining chapters of Navigating Early by Claire Vanderpool over the course of the next couple of months. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for your patience. And a special thanks to those of you who reached out to me on social media to give me that nudge to keep with it. So here we go. Here is chapter 15 of Navigating Early by Claire Vanderpool. And Icky is joining us behind me. Enjoy. In the gray of early dawn, I kicked some dirt over the fire, which had long since died out, and we packed up our stuff without a word. The without a word part was fine, as I was sure that enough had been said the night before. Besides, early was in mourning. He laid Bucky on a sturdy maple leaf and set him adrift on the river. The current carried him out of sight, so at least the poor kid didn't have to see his frog get swallowed up by a 15-pound trout. A big old I told you so was on the tip of my tongue. My mom used to say, don't pour salt in the wound or you'll never get the taste out of your mouth. So I kept my mouth shut. I was ready to get going, but Early said we needed a song for the funeral. I let out a sigh and waited for him to start up with Amazing Grace or maybe Rock of Ages. But once he started singing a heartfelt and very off key rendition of Up a Lazy River, I realized it was Monday. That means Louis Armstrong. It did provide a nice send off for old Bucky, and with that, we lowered the mane onto the water and took up our positions. My arms and legs, cold and stiff. Sh My arms and legs, cold and stiff from sleeping on the hard ground, practically moaned as I took the few first few strokes through the morning fog. We hadn't brought along any of the wax, honey, and vinegar concoction. But Early was apparently taking a moment to primp a bit as he put on some kind of ointment or lotion that he had in a flat round canister. His meticulous attention to covering every area of exposed skin grated on my nerves. First the nose and the ears, then the neck, cheeks, hands, and ankles. When he reapplied it to the ears, I'd had enough. What is that stuff? I grumbled. It smells like shoe polish. It's made out of mentholatum, lemon juice, and saddle soap. It keeps the bugs away. Bugs? What bugs? As soon as I asked, I had a feeling I knew what was coming. Remember that part where Pi runs into a swarm of biting insects? They can't be too far off, and I don't like to get bitten by bugs. I did remember that part. In fact, I must have listened more closely to the story of Pi than I thought. The bugs, the sharks, the hurricane, I remembered it all. I smiled at Early, the kind of smile you'd give to a little kid who still believes in the tooth fairy. Well, you be sure to lather up real good then. Sit tight and don't let the bed, bed bugs bite. If I'd been sitting closer, I might have ruffled his hair. I rode on as the fog thickened around us and then, ouch, I slapped at the back of my neck. Then again at my hand and my ankle. It wasn't fog. It was a cloud of mosquitoes or biting gnats or maybe tutsi flies. Early sat calmly, apparently unaffected by the bugs. Ouch, I said again, swatting at my cheek. Kind of late in the season for mosquitoes, isn't it? It's been a warmer than usual fall, Early said, looking over the side of the boat. It's called an Indian summer. That's the opposite of a blackberry winter. Quick, give me that stuff. I'm being eaten alive. Early tossed me the tin as he concentrated, staring intently into the water, first on the starboard side of the boat, then the port. Shh, he whispered with a finger to his lips. What? Do you think my talking is going to attract more bugs? I think we're already in the thick of it. Not bugs, he whispered, still gazing at the water. Sharks. I stared at him. 
I even opened my mouth to explain to him that sharks didn't live in freshwater rivers. But after swatting another insect, I clamped my mouth shut, grabbed the dragging oars, and began rowing with a vengeance. The Kennebec River stretched out for miles in front of us. Once I'd gotten Early's bug repellent on, the insects left me alone, and we eventually rowed out of the swarm. By nine o'clock, the clouds had lifted and the air around us was, was crisp and clear. I always loved October at home, with its morning chill in the air, the afternoon sun warming the wooden planks of the port front porch, bowls of steaming chili, and of course, baseball. I could feel a familiar ache coming back again, and I didn't want it. I needed something to distract me. So, Early, why don't you fill me in on the latest installment of Pi? What's been going on in his world lately? There are only a few numbers left that I know, and I don't have those memorized. Some parts I can tell from memory, and other parts, I need to read the numbers. After that, I have to figure out more numbers, but it takes a lot of calculating. That made me wonder, how did Early read those numbers? It was clear to me now that he was not making up a story and pretending that it came from the numbers. I should have known Early was not one to play make-believe. He may have thought some crazy unbelievable things, but he believed them. Can you teach me to read the numbers? I asked. I don't think it's something you can learn. Nobody taught me. I've just always seen numbers differently than most people. Fisher says it's a gift. He says when he sees the numbers that start with 3.14, it's just a bunch of figures that don't mean anything more than numbers. That made me sad for him. For me, they are blue and purple and sand and ocean and rough and smooth and loud and whispering all at the same time. He paused for a breath. I wished I could see what he saw, color and landscape, texture and voice. We passed under a rain cloud that shed a few sprinkles on us. It made me think of Billie Holiday, her rich voice. She could just hum with no words and you could hear the sadness, the pain, the feeling. That made me think. Maybe it's like listening to music, I said. How it can make you feel things without any words. There was a song at my mother's funeral. It was all in Latin and I didn't understand a word of it, but the way the sounds blended together and the music rose and fell, well, it could make a person cry if they were prone to that sort of thing. I blinked hard. How come Kansas doesn't have any color? We have color. No, you don't. It, yes, we... Oh, not that again. What makes you think that we don't have color? Because in The Wizard of Oz, Kansas is all in black and white and grays. There's no color until Dorothy gets to Oz. Oh, I laughed. That's only in the movies. Kansas has plenty of color, especially in the fall. I allowed the memory of it to draw me back. The sky is a beautiful blue. Like the ocean? Kind of. My mom says if the world ever got turned upside down, you could just dive right into the sky and swim in it. And the wheat just before harvest is a golden blanket of waves and ripples. That's nice. What does it sound like? It's just waving wheat. It doesn't make any noise. But then I thought about it. Well, I guess if you listen really hard, it makes a shooshing sound. What if you listened harder? If I listened harder, I closed my eyes as I kept rowing. I suppose it would sound kind of happy and full, like Benny Goodman and his band playing in the mood. It would be music you'd want to dance to. I kept my eyes closed, trusting early to guide me if I started rowing off course. And then there's all the fall produce in my mom's garden and the Bentley orchards. I could practically feel the dirt under my hands. The pumpkins are bright orange. There are sweet red apples and yellow squash. And of course, there's plenty of green. And all that ends up sounding like, mmm. Pumpkin pie, meaty stews, and cinnamon apple cobbler. And the trees. Yeah, the trees, said Early. I opened my eyes. I'd always liked the brilliance of leaves changing color at home, but here, I'd never been surrounded by trees like this. Their leaves all turning color, 
to bright oranges, deep yellows, and flaming reds. Whole forests of trees that looked like they were on fire. I eased up on the rowing, grateful for the rest of the moment to soak it all up. Early had given me a glimpse into what he saw and heard and felt through his numbers. And there was beauty in it that was warm and real. I suppose if color could be sound, I said, these trees would be playing a whole symphony. A Mozart symphony, Early answered, if it were Sunday. We rode along in a contented quiet listening to the sounds of all the colors around us. When a barge emerged from a little side stream and pulled up alongside our boat, there were seven or eight bearded and weathered faces staring down at us. These faces belonged to a ragged band that leaned over the ship's railing with arms crossed. They smelled a little rank, even from a distance, and looked like they'd been apart from civilization for some time. They just stared, and I wondered if they were waiting for us to speak first. Then the group parted, and a large man stepped forward. He put his hands on the rail of the barge and peered down at us. Dense trees reached out over the Kennebec River, allowing brief flashes of light to shine through the branches and leaves as we floated underneath. It was in those flashes that I could see the man's face. It was scarred on one side and a black patch covered his left eye. That's a fine looking boat you have there, lads. His face pulled into a contorted smile. You look like you've uh, had a long stretch of rowing. How about we tether your boat behind ours and we'll monitor you upstream a ways. Early caught his breath. His eyes opened wide. I stopped rowing and our boat lagged just a bit behind their barge. It was enough distance for Early to whisper what was on his mind. Pirates. That's the end of chapter 15, and I will be back soon with chapter 16 for you. Again, thank you for your patience, as it's taken me a while to record and upload these chapters. See you soon.